Human reproduction is a miraculous process. With the advancements in science, we can now explain and understand how the process works. In the 15th century, Antony van Leeuwenhoek discovered the sperm while testing one of his devices. He named his discovery, animalcules, and was the first person to observe sperm. The process of human reproduction has always been a mystery, and it has taken science a long time to unravel its complexities. However, the Quran has already given us insight into the process of reproduction, and it is still accurate to this day. A documentary produced in the UK called, The Great Sperm Race, explores the journey of sperm from the testicles to the egg. The documentary explains the journey through the perspective of the sperm. According to the Quran, human reproduction is a miracle and the beginning of life is described in detail. And the Holy Quran stated every single step with incredible accuracy 1400 years ago. These quotes from the Holy Quran, which describe the process very specifically, are the proof. Read, O Prophet, in the name of your Lord who created, created humans from a clinging clot. Quran chapter 96 verses 1 to 2. It is explained how human life is created from a drop of fluid. This fluid is semen, and it contains the sperm that fertilizes the egg. The Quran also describes the process of conception, development of the embryo, and its various stages. In the 23rd chapter titled, The Believers, from the 12th to the 14th verses, God is said to give a detailed description of how the human being is formed. It begins by saying, We then placed him as a sperm drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into our alaka. we will translate this word very soon. And then we changed the alaka into a lump. Then we made out of that lump into bones, and then we clothed the bones with flesh. Then we caused him to grow and come into being and attain the definitive human form. In the 21st century, we can now safely say that this verse is clearly describing the process of human development in correct chronological order. However, what we should be paying attention to in particular is the second stage, referring to the development of the embryo. The specific word used to describe the embryo in this verse is the word alaka. The word when translated into English can mean three separate things, firstly a blood clot, or to be suspended, i.e. to be hanging or clinging to something or third and finally, a leech. Now all three definitions don't come anywhere near what we perceive to be the human embryo. So why are these words used and what significance do they share with the human embryo? Can the embryo be described as a blood clot? Well, what do you think? In the third week of embryonic development, a tubular heart joins with the blood vessels to form a primordial cardiovascular system and by the end of the third week the blood is circulating and the heart begins to beat on day 21. The first thing that comes to mind in regards to being suspended or hanging is the umbilical cord. But we can't use that example because we are simply referring to step 2 before the baby has even formed. But we now know today that the umbilical cord is formed from the connecting stalk. And the connecting stalk is formed as soon as the embryo is formed. The embryo's connecting stalk has even been described by John Allen and Beverly Kramer as an object to suspend the developing embryo in the extra embryonic column. So an embryo is suspended and does have a strong resemblance with the blood clot. What on earth would an embryo have to do with a leech? Figure A shows the structure of an embryo at 25 days. Figure B shows a leech. Now please note once again that the embryo in this stage is no greater than the size of a kernel of wheat. This is an X-ray of the embryo at 22 days. This is the internal structure of a leech. It's mind-blowing stuff, but you still haven't seen anything yet. This is the head of the embryo at 22 days. The detail you are seeing right now is absolutely impossible to be seen with the human eye and can only be seen with a microscope. This is the back end of a leech. There are no other words used to describe this other than mind-blowing. The pictures we have shown you are impossible to be seen with the human eye or even to be predicted by the human mind. Once again the verses we have shown you were revealed over 1400 years ago to a man who couldn't read nor write. Are these the words of God? One of the most renowned experts in the field of embryology is Keith Moore, professor and chairman of the Department of Anatomy at the University of Toronto in Canada. His book, The Developing Human, is a standard textbook in universities and colleges worldwide. After studying the Quran and Hadith related to embryonic development, he concluded that the classification of the stages of human development based on morphological changes is based on easily understood actions and changes in shape, which was already mentioned in the Quran and Hadith. Keith Moore's research shows that the scientific knowledge contained in the Quran and Hadith about the development of the human embryo was not known until centuries later. 
The fact that this knowledge was already present in the Quran and Hadith proves that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was indeed a messenger of Allah. And cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God.